Well, good morning and welcome to our virtual walk uh, around the parish of Cobbley near Cheltenham. As you can see from this first slide, this is one of several walks I've described in a little booklet which is available either by going onto the website and filling in a form or just pick a booklet up when uh, the churches are open. And the Churn Valley Way is shown by the solid red line running down the valley <clears throat> from Seven Springs in the north all the way down to Sirencester. About half the route consists of quiet country lanes and bridle ways and can be done on a mountain bike, apart from the footpaths where we have to get off and push. So it's fun to zoom into Cobbley using Google Earth. I don't know if you tried this, but um, here we go. You can just type in any place you like and it takes you there in this rather fun way. And uh, I like the, the 3D effect as well. Just a few facts and figures about the walk. It is going around the largest of the nine parishes in the Churn Valley Benefice. Uh, part of the walk along the northern escarpment is along the Cotswold Way. It visits uh, Neolithic and Iron Age sites, has some spectacular views and can be done as a full 9.6 miles or split into two uh, of about equal length. So um, it's, it's highly recommended. I would think of all the walks, apart from the Churn Valley Way, this is the one that, uh, that I uh, enjoy the most. Starting point uh, is known as the Barberwood Car Park. And um, you can see the four landmarks there, Cobbley, Seven Springs, Ullenwood, Crickley Hill, Country Park. And then you may notice in the top left corner, there's a, a, a lighter area. I think that's because the satellite pictures have been stitched together uh, at some point. But uh, the escarpment runs along the top edge there and um, yeah, it gives fine views over Cheltenham. As, as with all the walks I've described, it's a good idea to take a map. And the relevant one here is uh, OS Explorer 179. This is the Barberwood car park. And uh, you see a notice board there and the car park's just beyond, but immediately on the left, uh, at that point, there's uh, a little hobbit hole and every so often uh, a little train comes out of there and runs around a track. Part of it is sunken into uh, the ground and part of it's elevated, but uh, um, that's quite an interesting feature if ever you happen to be there when the train comes out. The walk itself continues uh, up this little lane on the right. And uh, after about half a mile of gentle ascent, you can look back uh, over towards Cleve Hill. Uh, but the immediately in front of you at that point is the, uh, what I think is a, a, a radio station of some kind. I think it might be used for security uh, purposes, monitoring other businesses. Uh, the track continues. It's, by now it's level and then turns down under the A417 um, onto the Barrow Wake uh, car park area. Uh, this area currently is being uh, uh, restored or repair work done on it and it was the original road until um, the 417 was diverted 100 yards to the right. So these are some of the views that people come up here to enjoy. And it's, I think it's fair to say that this uh, viewpoint is one of the most famous in the whole of England. Looking across to the north, you see Crickley Hill, where we're heading for. And these bumps here are actually at the Barrow Wake Cemetery, which has been around for a long time, probably the Bronze Age, I think. And then, uh, in um, 1879, an excavation was done at Barrow Wake and they found two semicircular bronze buckets, which I've shown here in the bottom left. I think there were various other objects as well. 
Well, continuing north along the Cotswold Way, uh, after 100 yards or so, we are back on the 417, heading down towards the Air Balloon Pub. And good footpath runs all the way along there. And um, this is where uh, a road improvement scheme is due to take place in the next few years. They have been uh, talking about this for a long time. And I think the current plan is for the air balloon pub to be demolished and some kind of uh, flyover going across the top of the roundabout and heading off to the right where that lorry is coming slowly up the hill. Just at the bottom there by the roundabout, this is one of the most exciting public crossings you'll find anywhere really. And believe it or not, the Cots Cotswold Way uses this uh, little island in the middle uh, to get ramblers across. Um, so I think there's sc uh, scope for improvement here. The path then goes fairly steeply up through woodland or passing a, a cricket pitch at the bottom and then emerges through this, uh, this gate right next to a uh, visitor centre and just tucked away around the left of those umbrellas there's a nice little cafe at least at the time of uh, making this video anyway and um, beyond that you come to the entrance into the Iron Age fort and I've borrowed this, this sketch from uh, a book by Tim Copeland and the Crickley Hill uh, fort is one of maybe a dozen all along this edge of the Cotswolds which have been uh, studied in some detail. There are several forts here at Crickley Hill uh, interspersed over several hundred years. I recommend the book if you want to know more about it. At this point, uh, turning back to the north, the views become quite spectacular. Uh, looking over to Churchtown Hill, just over on the left, and you can see from the yellow fields that this was around late May. That'll be the oilseed rape. And just a hint of the Malvern Hills off to the north. Very nice woodland here. Um, the footpath goes along the edge of the escarpment until it meets Greenway Lane. And the route there is uh, down towards Sherdington. But um, that's uh, an old droving route for, uh, for sheep, which would have come up from uh, the valley bottom to, um, to here and then along to Pinswell for good grazing during the summer months. The little uh, gate on the right there uh, drops down the hill towards the Crippets, which is where Edward Wilson, the famous Antarctic explorer, grew up. Yes, lots of interesting history and his sketches uh, are very famous. Turning back the other way, and now we're heading east, uh, a very quiet country lane uh, leads along towards um, Ullenwood. And now this is where I get quite excited because there are rumours around of a, a secret nuclear bunker. And at first I thought, oh, that's it the uh, structure on the right with the uh, grassy top. There were several of these uh, nuclear bunkers, which are regional seats of government, and they were built in the 1950s and early 60s when uh, the Cold War was at its worst. So you can see there, there's a cluster of three in the south of England, uh, Ullenwood's clearly marked there. I have visited one or two of the others with Margaret, including uh, Kelvden Hatch and one at Anstruther as well in Scotland. So um, fascinating places, they're not all open to the public sadly. Oh Dover Castle as well, that's another very interesting one. And uh, over the years the Ullenwood bunker has uh, had several uses. So this is how it used to look um, until about uh, five or six years ago. In the top left you can see um, 
a uh, square looking building in the center and just over on the right in the bottom right hand corner is the, is the edge of the building that I thought was the bunker but it is actually a waterworks uh, uh, treatment center and now uh, in the last few years the site appears to have been leveled um, but if you look very carefully you can actually see that they've piled soil all around the bunker and uh, grassed it over so that it merges in more with the landscape. And I think that's because uh, the Nissan huts have been demolished and there's a brand new smart house over in the, uh, the corner of the, uh, the field there. Well, uh, the Greenway uh, Lane continues past some open fields and there over on the left you can see uh, Leckhampton Hill which we're heading towards. After about uh, another half mile there's an intersection again uh, a place to be careful because uh, the traffic does come at quite some speed there but across on the other side um, after a few hundred yards there's a turning into the National Star Centre which um, as you can see from the inscription there is helping uh, children and people young people with disabilities and uh, it's got a very good reputation further down the lane uh, this is what you see this would have been the original entrance into uh, the uh, uh, the building area where the which has now been taken over by the college and just on the, the left at that corner there's a footpath going off to the left that's where the Cotswold Way takes a sharp turn but at this point uh, you, if the weather's bad or you've just had enough it's possible to keep going down the lane and within a few minutes you're back at the Barberwood car park you can see just across the, the side of the road anyway returning to the corner which I mentioned before for the Cotswold Way we start walking up here <clears throat> there are some fine open views it does get quite steep and tricky in places and this is one of the few um, walking routes where I've come across uh, road signs I think this is a warning really for, for, for people on mountain bikes or whatever uh, just to watch out for other users path continues steeply upwards I think technically it might be a restricted byway and then uh, before long opens out into uh, these uh, these fields lovely flowers red maids and common teasel around about here at this point there's the uh, rather smart eco house which is reached by a road going uh, towards Hartley Farm. So this is the road I mentioned and the eco house is just beyond where that car is. But the route actually turns down to the left here and uh, nice gentle descent until reaching this point where uh, there's a quarry just ahead but the, the footpath, the Cotswold Way goes off to the right. And here's a, a view um, from Google Earth showing the red dotted line going along the edge of the escarpment to reach Lecampton Hill. And on the way, um, there's a view of the Devil's Chimney, as it's known. We'll have a look at that now. That's the Devil's Chimney. I've taken that from uh, Wikimedia, I think it is. Um, and beyond, as you can see, the Malvern Hills. I always like the, the mist hanging around in the valley bottom, quite atmospheric. So this looks like it was an autumn day. There's no leaves on the trees. And uh, building site down below in Sherdington, I think that must be. There, is, there are interpretation boards on top of Lecampton Hill which give um, uh, some helpful information. The quarry face here is over 100 feet high 
and uh, there's no barriers of course you've just got to use common sense and not get too close and if not if you can see it but at the bottom people have been made, writing messages with loose rocks um, now what so interests me here and my friend Cliff Poole has pointed this out these uh, circular features you can see um, at certain times of year they almost to within a few days they spring up with flowers forming a, a circle uh, you can see the remnants of them there and then they'll be back again next year so um, I don't know what, how they've come to be there or what the significance is but um, they're quite clear from the air anyway this is um, uh, my nephew's son uh, standing underneath the cliff face looking at the different types of uh, limestone which have been laid down. We were looking for fossils on that particular trip. From the viewpoint then, uh, you head off following the path, noticing the trig point over on the right. And here we are back with Google Earth looking at the path which is um, well used. It is a very popular place. The ground drops off ever so steeply on the left. And uh, after probably half a mile or so, um, look out for a double gate on the right, just as the trees end, which um, goes uh, south then towards Hartley Farm. This is Hartley Farm to give you a feel for the place and um, just beyond Hartley Farm there's a footpath sign which points down into the valley bottom and it's a really secluded and beautiful little valley this one often there are sheep grazing there at the bottom the obvious way is to carry on down through the trees that wooded valley but our route goes along the edge of the trees and um, rises gently past a pond to the top of the hill and there um, are some fantastic views down over Cobbley towards Cowley. Incidentally Barberwood car park is shown there over on the right and the intervening ground is uh, a um, golf course. Yet another dangerous road to cross, this time it's the A436 which we're looking uh, along it north towards uh, Andoversford and the Foss Way. Anyway, once safely across the other side of the road, um, there's a, a lane that goes down uh, into Cobbley, but just look at that uh, litter. And sadly, all along this A436, there's, uh, there's evidence of people's uh, disregard for the natural environment. The uh, lane I mentioned goes down uh, into Cobbley. Here are some farm buildings. One of them is of particular interest, uh, but I'll come to that in a moment, just to point out some of the uh, wildflowers, the poppies at certain times of year. And the building that is of particular interest is the brewery for the Cotswold Lion beers. About a year ago, some of us from church and the, the local village had a look round and were able to sample some of the delights of this brewery. And nearby is this uh, farm building which is, is quite attractive as it stands but I think it's up for sale and it's going to be uh, renovated into a family home. Over to the right at that point uh, there's a view down into a valley and uh, this is where the route will go um, but first I'd like to take you down into Cobbley village past the uh, war memorial uh, with the sundial on it and there's uh, David with some of the, the village kids for a, what looks like a harvest celebration. Cobbley has got a thriving Church of England primary school and several uh, of the church members are active there doing open the book and uh, various other ways of serving the community 
Uh, the Reverend Cliff Pooley has been associated with Cobbley School for many years and is currently the Chair of Governors. My friend Rick has pointed out an interesting feature here. Just behind that unusual looking tree, there's a building which used to be a, um, a church, not Church of England, but a free church. And uh, it's been converted in recent years into a family home. Further down into the village, there's the old post office. And when Margaret and I first came into the area, 30 years ago, that was still a post office. Just below the old post office, there's uh, this lovely spring, uh, and somebody's put a bench there for picnic purposes. About another five minutes down the road, you come to barns, and hiding behind that set of barns, through the little door on the right there, is the parish church dedicated to St Giles. So uh, this is a little guide on how to reach the church. Um, at the moment, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the residents have asked us to uh, go down the, uh, uh, the footpath and enter from the other end rather than disturbing them. But for worship purposes, we do go through this way. So that's the view on entering uh, the little doorway. And there's the tower. Soon after arriving in the parish, my, my son and I um, got the key and went up onto the roof. I wouldn't recommend this because you can see there's a very shallow parapet wall and it would be quite easy to drop over the edge of it. But the views were quite special. That's looking back to where we've come from. And this little bench seat you can see in the foreground on the bottom right. Very nice on a sunny day. But in the other direction, due south of the church, right next to it, there was been a medieval building, uh, Cobbley Hall, built by the Barclay family. And uh, it was a fortified house. It uh, stood there for hundreds of years until I think there was a fire a couple of hundred years ago, resulting in it needing to be demolished. But um, I would need to check the history to be absolutely sure of that. And there are two little booklets in church which describe the history of Cobbley. As I said, it uh, was, was built by the Barclay family. That's, um, they've got a big castle down in the valley bottom. So this was a little outpost, and there's um, there's Shield. One of the famous members of the Barclay family was Sir Giles, who went off to fight in the Crusades. He became friends with the, the rich and famous. He uh, was very devoted to his charger, Lombard, and the horse is buried uh, in the churchyard. Very unusual. Postcards available. Another interesting thing about uh, the parish church of St Giles is that um, Dick Whittington's mother is said to have been, uh, uh, have lived there and been buried in the, uh, the church. So there's a big uh, stone tomb uh, bearing her name. Here's uh, Janet who's helping out to um, improve the uh, uh, the grave of a former rector of the, the church. And you can look at the parapet wall, you can see the castellated features which show that this has got very ancient um, links with the uh, Barclay family. More recently, uh, Rick, Duncan and I have um, done a survey of the churchyard, plotting out the, the positions and in a spreadsheet, we've got the names and dates of all the people who have been buried there. The church is nicely decorated from time to time. This is the Harvest Festival. 
these are some of the people who've been most associated with the church. Uh, the late Reverend Canon Ian Pulford, uh, his son Christopher standing next to him. And you can see he put, had a very long innings here in, in Cobbley. And um, Cliff Pooley, parishioner, reader turned clergy, chair of the school governors, has been around for many years as well. Anne Jones, um, I would say perhaps even longer, has been uh, a leading light in Cobbley Parish Church. She retired in April 2016 from being church warden, but she's remained as a kind of informal or deputy church warden until very recently, just a week or two ago, she decided it was time to uh, come off the PCC. One of the uh, most exciting things for the children is when the icing pop people come into the village and they've been twice as far as I know and uh, the kids take away a CD at the end of the, uh, the day. Well, I think, actually I think it, they stay for about three days. These are some of the uh, parishioners, Andrea and uh, uh, Mary and Ian and there's Anne again. Every so often there are social events, the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, the Harvest Festival I mentioned. And here we have the uh, Harvest Supper being put on in a barn which uh, uh, Mary and Ian have uh, converted. And I think it's now a wedding venue. Talking of weddings, uh, here's a happy couple. I think that's Rupert and Zoe. Uh, now we have um, the annual fete. Well, I say now we have the annual fete. We aren't having it this year because of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And that's uh, sad because it's good fun and brings in a bit of income to the parish church. But um, that's a scarecrow competition, rather dignified scarecrows, I think. Uh, here's uh, Duncan and Lindsay. They're very much involved with the organisation and presentation of awards. Again, due to the pandemic, we're having to make some adjustments. This is an open air service, so we don't have to wear masks to the same extent as if we were inside. And here we have Michael Dykes, our church warden, who's uh, manfully looking after not only Cobbley, but also uh, Cowley Parish Church single-handedly. Normally it would take four people to do that. And we're very grateful to Michael. He's a very gifted person, particularly in the administration area. So now we're um, going towards the end of the uh, walk around uh, Cobbley Parish. Back to that view I showed you before after visiting the, um, the brewery. So we dropped down using the road into the valley bottom, up past that house, and then follow the road alongside the wall there. This, apparently this is greater knapweed. I used a, a gadget on my uh, phone called Seek, which can identify most plants and animals and insects. Again, some magnificent views over uh, the, uh, the valley there. And uh, before long, there's a, uh, a corner in the road. You can see where vehicles park up on the right. You can actually go along the road, but it's about a mile and can be a bit tricky with traffic. Um, this is the sort of view you get if you go along the road. But I prefer to go through the gate and up the hill and then after about uh, a few hundred yards, there's a path going off to the right into the woodland that you can see. And before you know it, you're back at Barber Wood, uh, the car park area, having walked uh, all around the edge of Cobbley Parish. So I hope that's of interest and uh, that you'll be able to get out there into the real world and enjoy that one of these days. <laughs>